Well, we lived the true Bohem life. We had very little money. We lived in a, the equivalent of a cold water flat, although we had hot water but no kitchen. And we lived in the pawnbroker area of 48th Street and 6th Avenue, opposite Rockefeller Garage. And we lived on the fifth floor in the back. And we were, I took every kind of job imaginable just so we could pay our rent. And I'm probably, that's how I led the way to my becoming an agent because I helped trying to put him over. And because of my work earlier before the war, I knew so many people in show business. And I tried to help him get his music published and get jobs. And he got a couple of nightclub jobs. And then we got him together with William Morris, whom I later, having nothing to do with that, joined. And uh, he was so handsome. He was a better looking Henry Vonda. And he had sort of a James Stewart personality, sort of a shyness. So every, and a beautiful voice. So every place we went, everybody thought it was a, that he was stardust. But he just missed it because he was too nice. Uh, you, you have to be terribly ambitious, willing to push everybody aside. And uh, he, if somebody else wanted to sing, he'd step back and, let, and accompany them. And that's not the way you get to the top in show business. I took every kind of job imaginable, interesting jobs. Uh, for those three years, I guess. Three years, I guess. And then I began, began to get restless. I realized that I should, uh, uh, I realized that I should uh, start to do something on my own and not be just devoting, just earning money so that we could eat. And then my husband got a job in Finian's Rainbow, the original company of Finian's Rainbow. On Broadway? On Broadway, mm -hmm. and I got a job working for Robert Montgomery, the actor, and Elliot Nugent, who was one of the important actors. Both of our plays went to Philadelphia at the same time. And we lived a marvelous show business life. It was just so exciting. Uh, this was prior to Robert Montgomery's uh, show? Yeah, absolutely. Presents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a play, I forget the name of it now, that was Claire Dunn. Mm -hmm. But we, um, so our house was filled every night. Our cold water flat was filled with all the musicians and singers of Finian's Rainbow. And they just, it was music all night long. We just, it was all, and then I go to bed practically at dawn and I take, have three hours, you know, when you're young and in love, it, I mean, sleep doesn't mean anything. I get about three hours sleep, and then I could go down, well, I persuaded a young man who delivered ice to the cafeteria on the first floor to bring an ice cube up for us, which was in our bathtub for the party late at night. And I'd ride down Fifth Avenue on the ice truck to work. And during that time, I decided that I had to do something interesting. And I had a friend who was a big influence in my life, who was a lawyer at BMI, Broadcast Music, as opposed to ASCAP. And we were having lunch one day, I can remember as if it were yesterday, at Schraff's, uh, which I don't know was in existence anymore. And uh, I said, you know, I really think I should do something on my own now. She said, well, you certainly should. She said, what do you think you'd like to do? Why I said I'd like to be an agent, I haven't the slightest idea. I don't know where it came from. It was destiny again. She said, oh my God, that's exactly what you should do. And the aunt, she had some very well-known aunts who were the most important female doctors in New York, women doctors. One was head of, of Dr. Sophie Kliegman was head of obstetrics and gynecology for New York University Hospital. And the other, Dr. Daniels, was, head, was the first doctor uh, who brought forth methadone. And she said, oh, the aunts know Bill Liebling and Audrey Wood, who were the most distinguished small theatrical agency in the business. The big agencies were Music Corporation of America and William Morris. And um, uh, so she said, let me set up an appointment. So I went over to have an appointment with Bill Liebling. And then two days later, he called me. He said, I have a hunch about you come see me, and I went in, and he said, um, again, I have a hunch about you, why don't you come and open up a television department? He was just starting. He was a funny little man. Uh, he represented actors. Audrey Wood had just become the most important small literary agent, dr drama agent in the business. She had Tennessee Williams, who had just written Streetcar Named Desire, William Inge, who had written Come Back to Little Sheba and Picnic, and Carson McCullers, who had just written Member of the Wedding. So 
I was just smart enough to realize that all these remarkable writers were there. And so I accepted. And he said, come in. And he didn't offer me any money, but I just took it anyway. And he said, we'll give you 50% of the commission. So of course, for a year, a year and a half, I earned no money. But that's how I became an agent.